Okay. When I start a diagram, I either start with a pencil or I start with a non-photo blue pencil. I thought I had one, but a standard pencil works fine. A blue pencil is interesting because the scanner or a Xerox machine will tend not to pick it up. So we continue with a series of shapes or motions that involve the entire arm. Shoulder, elbow, all the way down, not the wrist alone. This involves moving the entire arm, and I can move the entire table. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Fantastic. But it involves a loose representation of area, which we typically call bubbles. Some people call them beans, <laughs> kidney beans. If you're a chili man like myself, uh, they can overlap. They can intersect. They can start to form representations of areas or representations of edges, pathways, or the like through that. But it involves moving the entire arm and being very comfortable and starting to establish shape. Now, the thing that some folks like to do, a friend of mine is a landscape architect. He's chair at Purdue right now. Not bad for being in his 30s. He extends his pinky like he's having a martini or a glass of wine and uh, extends his pinky and he pivots on that so, so that the pencil has a little bit of leverage so there's not a lot of the fleshy part of the palm that can start to smudge everything. The other thing is to have a cover sheet or a cover, some sort of cover, either a piece of paper or otherwise that you can rest your hand, the fleshy part of the palm with the moisture in your palm will not, will not transfer to the paper and you can shuttle around as you work. Paper works better, but uh, obviously having a canvas bag here does allow for some shuttling, uh, but an extra piece of paper usually works fine. We call that a cover sheet. You put it under your palm and you can shuttle around the document that way. Other lines and symbols are best supported with the aid of some sort of graphic tool. It could be a highlighter, it could be a, a yellow marker, it could be a gray marker. Uh, the yellow highlighter and the yellow marker are interesting because most markers have one, two, three line weights that are incorporated into it. And that can become a graphic aid for making arrowheads, for making symbols, for making marks that represent landmarks, that represent nodes. There are a couple different line weights there. You can drag either the what I call the heel of the marker or the toe of the marker to actually get a couple of different levels. Um, this British marker has the potential for three line weights. So immediately you have three levels of, of emphasis there. When, when that's done, you reinforce those things with a fine line like this. And what that does, the marker does, is it gives you a uniform line width by which this marker has helped you to make something that creates emphasis and hierarchy. It makes the shape look more professional. Uh, you can draw it by by itself, but but the marker width actually makes the shape more defined. And then when you put line weight around it, it looks very crisp and noticeable. Same thing goes for these other beans or these <laughs> other areas. By laying them out in pencil first, then I have a better guide by which I can knock in line weight, in this case a thin line weight, and start to define that area. A little bit of that same color just uh, gives it just a little bit of extra dimension and character. Um, and then line weights start to build up. There's different types of markers that have different line weights. Here's for overlaying something that's going to create emphasis. You can see immediately that that starts to pop. If we use the full black, the full chisel, that probably indicates that this might be a really important thing. <laughs> that could be an edge, right, or a river, or a cliff edge, or that could be a highway, right, as, as that starts to come together. And then you start to continue to layer together these other levels of emphasis, whether they be landmarks, whether they be destinations, or whether they be attractions or service areas or things like that. The key word is layers because there's layers of emphasis and layers of hierarchy that start to happen as you control these different line weights and these different shapes and areas against each other. And again, a, a yellow marker or a highlighter will, will, will read when you scan this, it will read either as a soft gray 
or it will disappear entirely. The yellow highlighter will disappear entirely when you scan this in black and white. An orange highlighter will show up as a gray. So if you're looking for a gray tone as part of an area like this, uh, an orange highlighter will show up as a gray when you scan it. And you can even use this as an, as an emphasis color or as an accent color. And that starts to become readable as something in this graphic system. Maybe this is a, if this is a highway exit, maybe this is the truck stop, right? So this becomes the destination, first thing off the exit, just something relatable. You've all been to truck stops, you've all been to highway exits. So the first thing off of that exit, and you can continue to layer in information depending on what kind of markers you start to have. Maybe this is the collector road heading into a residential area that comes back to the, to the exit itself. Maybe we add a little more color around the exit to create more emphasis. We can continue, continuously add more layers of information until the graphic is reading and communicating what we want it to do. Other things we can do, I mentioned during the line weight, there's different pens that yield different things. You can add tone, so I can lay in a tone over one of these and it reads differently and it starts to read read as a map. So these all become elements that can become part of a key or a legend. So if you want to use different techniques to represent different things, that can become part of a map legend, almost as if you were creating your own very map from the first time, or if you're describing this area in a mapping sort of way. There might be destination points, there might be attraction points, there might be other ways of collecting through, there might be other edges, there might be a forest edge, or there might be a hard edge or a cliff edge. Sometimes edges are described using other symbols. Uh, sometimes they're, they're used like this, so that might be a, a woods edge or something like that. We add a line weight to that and it's reinforced like so. Add a thinner line weight on the inside edge. Reinforce like so. And that starts to read as a non-penetrable edge as far as development or human habitation is concerned. You always add a little bit of line weight to reinforce this as a shape or symbol. When you scan it, it'll show up as gray. Other things, other things. Um, going under, so maybe there's something that goes under something. We can continue something under and have it join up with something. It can layer underneath. What might that be if it's going under something? What, could, what kind of system would go under our transportation <laughs> like that? What would, what would do that? Subway, train. Okay, so yeah, so a railroad or a river, that might be something that would go underneath or we would put infrastructure over. So it could be a natural boundary, a natural edge. You can always bring back my pencil, do a little bit of grayscale, and, um, and start to reinforce that, maybe with topographic lines or with additional woods edge or even, even a couple of trees, which starts to reinforce that as a natural boundary. Okay. And then there's other things. We can start to make things that look like so, start to make areas that look like this. There's other diagramming tools or techniques that start to read as larger things. I won't spend a lot of time on that, but then you build the arrow around this, like so, with a little bit of extra thinner line weight in here. That's another, another descriptor line, and you can also use this to build up a dashed line. I, I, I'll start one here and then stop, 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 like that, and then bring in 
shaking the table too much. <laughs> I'll bring in the thinner line weight and run this to either run it together a little bit, but but then re en enhance the stops in between. It still reads together as one thing, but it's a dash line which might have interruptions in it, or it might be, have crossings in it, or over it, or through it, like that. Okay, a dash line has that ability for things to pass through it. If later on in that diagram this needs more emphasis, I can always add more line weight to it, like so. We just give it a little bit of extra space, and we add a secondary line weight. It's always easier to add line weight as opposed to take it away, so... <laughs> Rule of thumb is just start with the pencil or the layout pencil and then build up emphasis or hierarchy or line weight as you go based on what the diagram needs and where the emphasis is. Now it's all said and done, which, which element stands out the most to you from where you're standing? Where does the eye go first? The big, thick black ink arrow is the first thing that's that's the first thing our eye goes to so this might be the most important part of the whole development maybe this is the highway exit and so maybe this needs more emphasis and more build up and then it peters out and into different land uses or other things right it makes sense and sometimes that accent color can come in and just add a little bit of character to the different masses or areas. And that's ready to scan. Okay. Lettering, you just bring in your straight edge. Could be a, everybody has a straight edge. Whether you know it or not, everybody has a straight edge. <laughs> you just bring that in and use your lettering skills to letter in labeling. Whatever your lettering style is starting to become, whether it has a slant or it's straight up block lettering, you just lay in all the lettering practices you've done up to this point, just layer that in as part of a labeling system and it starts to, starts to become a finished diagram, okay? So those are the shapes, symbols, techniques, practices that can come together with line weight, a little bit of color, a little bit of technique, and a little bit of lettering to make diagrams communicate well.